Hello everyone, this is NWS Columbia lead meteorologist Emily Carpenter and this is the fourth episode of Calculating the Odds, a video series on probabilistic weather forecasting. In this episode, we will cover National Weather Service products associated with tropical storms and hurricanes. The National Hurricane Center, NHC, located in Miami, Florida, issues a variety of products including those pertaining to tropical cyclone potential. Let's go over some of their probabilistic products so that you can use them effectively this hurricane season. Before we discuss these products, let's briefly review a few basic tropical terms and definitions. Tropical cyclone is the general term used to describe low pressure weather systems that form over the tropical or subtropical oceans of the world. These warm core, non-frontal areas of low pressure are comprised of thunderstorms and can produce heavy rainfall and strong winds in addition to other hazards. When a tropical cyclone's maximum sustained winds reach 39 to 73 miles per hour, it is classified as a tropical storm and gets a name. In the North Atlantic and Northeastern Pacific Ocean basins, the term hurricane is used for the most intense type of tropical cyclone. They have maximum sustained winds of 74 miles per hour or higher. Structurally, they often feature an area of mainly clear skies at the center, known as the eye, which is surrounded by the region of strongest winds, called the eye wall. Hurricanes are assigned a number from 1 to 5 on the Saffir Simpson wind scale based on their maximum sustained winds. A Category 5 hurricane has the strongest winds, which are in excess of 156 miles per hour. A tropical storm or hurricane watch is issued by the National Hurricane Center when tropical storm or hurricane conditions are possible somewhere within the watch area during the next 48 hours. This is the time for people within the watch area to review their hurricane plans and prepare for the possibility of the various hazards associated with tropical cyclones. A tropical storm or hurricane warning is issued by the NHC when tropical storm or hurricane conditions are expected somewhere within the warning area during the next 36 hours. This is the time for people within the warning area to enact their hurricane plans. Now that we have discussed these differences, let's review some of the products the NHC issues starting with the Outlook phase. One of the products you may be familiar with is the Tropical Weather Outlook or TWO for short. This product is issued by the NHC four times daily between May 15th and November 30th each year. It's issued at 2 and 8 a.m. and p.m. during Eastern Daylight Time and an hour earlier during Eastern Standard Time. Two TWO products are produced with each issuance which outline the potential for tropical cyclone development during the next two and seven days respectively. A special tropical weather outlook may be issued outside of these dates and times if NHC determines the forecast has changed significantly enough to warrant an update. A graphical version of the TWO is available on the NHC website. Each potential area of development is assigned a probability of development during the next two or seven days. This probability takes into account numerous atmospheric and oceanic factors. Disturbances with a low or less than 40% probability of tropical development are colored yellow, medium or 40 to 60% probability is orange, and high or greater than 60% probability of development are colored red. On screen is the TWO from the morning of August 17th, 2023. As you can see, the NHC was monitoring four areas for possible development across the Atlantic Basin during the next seven days. In this example, all four of these outlooked areas eventually became tropical cyclones. From left to right, we have the tropical waves that became Harold in the Gulf of Mexico on the 21st, Franklin south of Hispaniola on the 20th, Gert east of the Antilles on the 19th, and finally Emily in the eastern Atlantic on the 20th. Another commonly viewed graphic is known as the Cone of Uncertainty. This product is issued by the NHC with each advisory package after a tropical cyclone forms. The graphic shows the forecasted positions of the center of the tropical cyclone during the next three or five days. In its current form, coastal tropical storm and hurricane watches and warnings are displayed on the cone of uncertainty. 
Starting on or around August 15th, 2024, an experimental version of this product will also display inland tropical storm and hurricane watches and warnings for the continental United States. It is important to mention that the cone of uncertainty depicts the area where the center of the tropical cyclone is expected to move two-thirds of the time. This means the center falls outside of the cone approximately 33% of the time. Additionally, impacts from a tropical cyclone can be felt up to 200 miles away from the center. As a tropical cyclone approaches, it is important to know when tropical storm force winds are expected to begin. The most likely time of arrival graphic, shown on the left, provides users with a reasonable estimate of when tropical storm force winds should begin at their location. This particular graphic is also overlaid with the probability of tropical storm force winds during the next five days. In this example, tropical storm force winds were expected to begin after 8 p.m. Wednesday across the Midlands of South Carolina and between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. Wednesday in the southwestern part of our forecast area, known locally as the CSRA. The graphic on the right depicts the probability of hurricane force winds issued in the same advisory package as the left image. Probabilistic wind speed graphics show you the chance of a given location experiencing the selected wind speed, either 39, 58, or 74 miles per hour, during the next five days. It is important to mention that the chance of hurricane force winds impacting a location are low outside of the direct path of the tropical cyclone, and that these probabilities do not account for wind gusts. Much like the probabilities from the severe weather outlook discussed in the previous episode, even low or 5% probabilities of hurricane force winds need to be taken seriously. In this example, the coastal areas of South Carolina have a 5 to 10% chance of seeing hurricane force winds during the next five days from Hurricane Idalia. As a result, these areas were under a tropical storm warning and hurricane watch at the time of this advisory. While the NWS Columbia forecast area does not have marine responsibilities, we wanted to touch on storm surge for our partners with concerns along the coast. Storm surge is the abnormal rise in seawater level measured as the height of the water above the normal astronomical tide. The surge is primarily caused by the wind associated with a storm pushing water onshore and does not include waves. NHC issues a peak storm surge graphic which depicts the highest storm surge expected between the two points. In this example, there was a forecast for 10 to 15 foot storm surge between Oscilla River and Yankee Town along the Gulf Coast of Florida ahead of Hurricane Idalia. Tropical cyclones bring a myriad of weather hazards besides wind and storm surge. These threats include tornadoes and inland flooding. For more information about severe weather and flood products, please watch episodes three and five of our web series. That will wrap things up for this episode of Calculating the Odds. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and we will go over them in the next video of this series. Expect the next topic to debut on our YouTube channel in the next month or two. If you haven't already, make sure to follow NWS Columbia on YouTube and enable notifications so you are among the first to see our latest videos. Thank you for watching. I'm NWS Columbia Lead Meteorologist Emily Carpenter signing off until next time.